Welcome everyone. I'd like to call this meeting uh, July 7th, 2015, the Haldane Board of Education Annual Reorganization Meeting to order. At this time, I'd like to ask you to join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Trustee Clements. Present. Trustee Daly. Here. Trustee Henderson. Here. Trustee elect Parr. Here. Trustee elect Schwartz. Here. Okay. Now, at this time, I would like to give the oath of office to um, Trustee elect Parr and trustees elect Parr and trustee elect Schwartz. of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee of the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Get the sign, right? Yes. Yes. I, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee of the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District according to the best of my ability. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take nominations for President of the Board of Education. I'd like to nominate Jennifer Daly. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of electing Jennifer Daly as president of the Board of Education, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Ms. Daly, I'd now like to give you the oath of office for president. Yes, ma'am. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of President of the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District according to the best of my ability. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thanks for the vote yeah, of confidence. Congratulations. <laughs> <That's> a surprise. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think I now I now pick up where where we left off with. Um, can I have some uh, any nominations for vice president of the board of education? I'll nominate Peter Henderson. I'll second. second. Oh. I'll third. <laughs> <laughs> second and thirding over here. Um, any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Peter. It's your turn. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Vice President of the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Now we go into the appointment of the district clerk, et cetera. Um, do you need to read that after I do a motion, Julia? Or can I just do what I just did for it? Let me just um, find where I am first. Uh, so this is for the district 
clerk, clerk pro tem, uh, district treasurer, deputy treasurer, tax collector, and claims auditor. I'll read, I'll read the recommended action. The, the recommended action is that the Board of Education appoints the following officers of the Board of Education effective January, excuse me, July 7th, 2015, through the July 2016 annual reorganization meeting at the stipends noted. And the offices are district clerk, district, or clerk pro tem, district treasurer, deputy treasurer, tax collector, and claims auditor. Okay, can I have a motion? Second. Great. Any discussion about our um, appointments? All good? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, District Clerk. <laughs> Clerk yeah, thanks. thanks. Okay, we got everybody in order. Um, so I just want to uh, first of all say welcome to our new uh, board member, Margaret Parr. This is our first official meeting with Margaret at, at, with us. So, um, and just uh, welcome to all of us as we are now officially um, a team together. So, um, looking forward to working with all of you. And welcome to the 15th, 16th school year. And welcome oh, yes. to the, officially. Yep. It feels like school doesn't start until September, but that's not actually true right now. Um, and I just wanted to take a second to uh, thank Brian Um. I know graduation feels like a million years ago at this point, but that was kind of our last uh, big thing that we did together. And um, what a great event and what a great leader he is. I know there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that make graduation happen, but he really leads the charge. So um, congratulations to Brian. Thank you to Brian. Um, I understand it was the only remembered graduation there where there was rain, um, which rained during the middle of the ceremony, which I find surprising and very lucky, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but Brian handled it like he had his finger on the meteorological pulse. He just said, okay, everybody, let's wrap this up. And, and then as soon as we were in, it started to rain. It was perfection. It was like he was just tracking the storm. So, um, Kudos to him, handled very gracefully, and it was a great, it was a great day. So uh, thank you to everybody. Um, we're gonna move into uh, Diana's report, Dr. Bauer's report. So um, we have good news about uh, Monolith Solar. We spoke to them today, and they are starting on um, the district office bus garage roof, which has been approved by two different sources to hold the, the solar panels, they're starting on Monday. So um, the, we're, we're ready to go. And so we have, um, we had an independent, um, an analysis done by the district. Monolith also did a, an analysis and both came and said that the, the, we could place the panels there. So that's good news. And so they're, uh, they are ready to go. Um, Second thing that I have um, to discuss, and I think this is going to be more of an ongoing discussion. Um, I think, as everybody knows, uh, Jennifer Wilson has taken uh, a new job with BOCES, and she will be starting at the end of July. And so this is a time for us to consider um, what the best options are for the district at this point. And I know that we've talked a little bit about uh, potential options. We're going to have to talk more about them. But one of the things that we have to consider as we go into um, this discussion is really the fact that it's going to be happening simultaneously with our strategic plan. And so this is a kickoff to our strategic plan. We're going to look about what we as a, a district feel our best um, organizational structure would be in order to accomplish that. And so um, more to come on that, but I did want to let you know that that was in conversation. Um, the third is just a question for the board. Um, we are at our administrative retreat. We have decided, and I don't know if anybody's experienced this before, that we're going to do the MBTI personality profiles. And basically, it tells you who you are as a person. And what works well with the MBTI is not only does it tell you who you are and what makes, how you think and how you process information, 
but when you do it as a collective group, there's also discussion about how you can work best together. And so if you're one type of personality and you're working with another type of personality, this is the way that you best work together. So we're doing that as an administrative group. Um, I asked Jen if she would want to consider it or the board would want to consider it um, as something that we could do together and um, as part of our retreat. So I'm, yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, my answer was that I had, I had, I've not done it before personally, so I'm not sure if it's a, it's a great benefit to us. So I just kind of wanted to throw it out to everybody to see. I went to a workshop on this like last week or the week before, and it was the most amazing thing ever. It was, you, you went and you, you looked at, they had a little form and it told you, you know, what personality traits fit in where. And, and it said, you know, when you have an even balance of the personality traits, this is what you do to work with that person. The problem comes when you have two of the same personality trait and they both are looking for the same kind of affirmations, the same kind of, um, they have the same kind of weakness. It was fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. I would absolutely recommend it. I would think, so I don't know anything about this particular inventory, um, although I could find out. <laughs> MBTI, MBTI. Myers-Briggs. Oh, it's Myers-Briggs. Okay. okay, yes, of course I do. Yep. <laughs> Just, I've, I've never heard of it as MB. Yes, the okay. Myers-Briggs, yeah. One of the things that could be beneficial would be that it, it, at the very least it, it's going to lay out a set of different kinds of, of, of ways that people interact with each other and mm -hmm. ways that people approach problems and it would provide, you know, it could provide an, a, a, a beneficial conversation about just recognizing that there are different ways of approaching problems and, and, and different ways about thinking, you know, thinking about things. I haven't done the Myers-Briggs, I don't think, since I was in high like school. College, yeah. um, what are we talking about in terms of, would it be something that we do in, like at the August 18th meeting? Would it be something we do actually at the retreat? Um, it probably, it probably should be would be better done at the retreat, where mm -hmm. we could kind of pour over what each of our personality profiles are and have an understanding of how they work best together. We can either do it in, with just us, or we, there, we do have a consultant that's gonna be coming in and working with the administrators a half a day. Um, and they're coming in August 18th, and if you wanted to do it, we could go from the administrative conversation into um, an early conversation with the board and go from there so um, we wouldn't hopefully be spending any more money if we did that. So it's up to you how you'd like to do it. But I, I think it's, it's fascinating. Even one of the profiles is if you're an introvert or an extrovert. And it's not if you like physically are an extrovert and you, you know, like to talk and, and you like to go out. It's more of how you think. And people who are extroverts, they talk through concepts and so they'll be thinking and trying to make decisions and talk about it out loud. And introverts are the, uh, are the people that have to cogitate and kind of think about it and may not react right away. And so if you have an extrovert that's automatically reacting, talking to an introvert that's just trying to make meaning of what just has come, that's just an understanding of how you work better together. Mm -hmm. And that's just an example. And there's four different categories like that. And I know we have kind of an, a long day already on, on a retreat, like lots to get through. So what yep. do you think? Does it, if you guys no, are into it. it how long is the process? Yeah, so. it might be better to do it on the 18th instead of jamming oh, up I the think, retreat drag yeah. with it. And we would probably do it before we came together. We would do the questions um, of the MBTI um, prior to, and then we would submit it, and then, a, and then they would give us a report of who we are. And then we could go from there. So it could be, it wouldn't all be done at the same time. But more, our conversation would be, we could either just take the information and, the, and the, what the report tells us and go from there, and, or we could have a, a conversation that's um, associated with uh, somebody who has an expertise in it. So are there any objections? Well, Peter? I think this is the one we did uh, two, three years ago when we came in for our Technology Day. I don't think you were there that day. No. Were you when we came in for the iPad presentations and we met with students and uh, no. it was our Technology Day? Yeah, we did because no. well, it's part of Naviance, I think. Yes. Yeah. So we similar. so we all did it and it was kind of interesting. Uh, right. So yeah, I mean, I think uh, because the actual taking of the test can be done independently right. anywhere, right. anytime. Right. 
Uh, so we wouldn't want to take up time in a meeting yeah. or a retreat for, for that piece, but okay. sure. Okay, so maybe we could do it on our own and then we could talk about the results on the 18th, maybe as, you know, pre-meeting or post-meeting. Okay. Sounds good. good. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get those ordered. Okay, and then um, the last is enrollment numbers. I just wanted to give you an update. We're still holding relatively steady with kindergarten. Um, we haven't reached the tipping point yet, so I'll, we're going to be watching that very closely. Now is the time, however, that you have the greatest opportunity for people to come in and, and enroll students. So we'll see how it goes. Can you remind so. everybody of what that tipping point number is? Well, we, we're looking at 66, which would be um, 22 in each kindergarten classroom. And we're gonna, we're, we'll have to make decisions once, once we get beyond to see um, what percentage of time of our new hire um, we'll actually be working with the kindergarten group and so we th we know that the the half of the day it looks like about I think four tenths of the day I should say will be within the kindergarten team and then the question will be do we have to add more time to that so that was my understanding from attending the meetings when you all discussed this was that it, the, that given the particular makeup of this particular class the, the needs that they would present that uh, uh, rather than necessarily adding a fourth classroom that the the better investment could be bringing in this specialist right. to to be really pushing in a lot of services that, that that would be more beneficial for children than than breaking them from whatever a 22 to a whatever it is 15 classroom yeah. And so we hired uh, a woman who is uh, a special educator, also has um, a strength in literacy. Um, the class we're also watching right now is the first grade because it, it was about the same um, size as the kindergarten and we've had two new first graders come in. So we don't have aides in the first grade, we do have aides in the kindergarten, and we're gonna have to make sure that um, we keep an eye on both because as far as the, the literacy foundation and the numerics foundation, um, first grade is probably the most important grade. So that, that specialist uh, will be split potentially between first grade and kindergarten depending yes. on yep. the needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just an update, and I'll keep you informed as we go along. Okay, um, committee minutes. Uh, we're going into the code of conduct, which has had a bit of a revision. Um, so there have been two different forms of revisions made um, in the code of conduct. One is there, the, the code has been pretty much, um, it's, there's been a major edit that's taken place. Um, I think there's still a few changes that we have to make, but for the most part, um, we've gone through and it's been, um, it's been shored up quite a bit. There are also some other suggestions or modifications um, that will, will be added. And there was a cover page that, was, that came in front of the Code of Conduct um, that looks, that has this type of information on it, which was all the changes that are within were pulled out onto one page. And so you can go within to look, or you, but we pulled it out to make it more user friendly for you. Um, so the code was given to you today. Um, the expectation was not that we approve it today. It was a choice of if you're ready to approve it, we can approve it. If you want time to read it and to, to ask questions or to make comments about it, that's, we can approve it at our next meeting. And I think that um, the approval of the code of conduct is kind of Technically, later it's under new business. This okay. is just the minutes. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Well, I okay. poorly prompted you. <laughs> yeah. um, is there any questions about the minutes from the Code of Conduct Committee? Um, okay. Is there any communication from the public? Okay. We're going to consent agenda minutes. Um, can I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Consent agenda financial. Can I have a motion? Motion. 
I'll second. Is there any discussion? Can I, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Consent agenda personnel. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? I just want to give a shout out to uh, Jen Wilson's uh, resignation is in here. Um, and what a huge uh, big thank you we have for her. She certainly will be missed. Um, not even just all that she does or did for the school, but she's just a super nice person. So um, it'll be uh, sad to just not see her around. Um, yeah, yeah. So we uh, send our thank yous and our well wishes to Jen and her next adventure. Is there anything you want to touch base with about in there, Diana? Are we good? Yeah, no, but I would also like to thank um, Jennifer Wilson. She took on many roles in this uh, district and um, was a, a very integral part of our administrative team, so we'll miss her. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving into unfinished business. Um, the August business meeting, uh, we have been talking about Tuesday, August 18th. Um, it was pending the tax information. Are we feeling pretty? And I'm kind of asking, are we feeling like it's, it's a good date? We're, we're solid? Okay. Um, so I think that's officially uh, decided on unless we hear differently for some reason. Uh, we've scheduled the board retreat for Saturday, July 25th. I think we all did our email dance. That works for all of us. So I think we're solid. Good. Like the details, like time, Yeah, where? time and place. I yeah. don't know that we have those details worked out yet, but okay. we're meeting this week to okay. chat about it. Yeah. It might not be on site. It might be off site. We'll kind of mm -hmm. figure it out, but probably like a nine to three-ish okay. plan for that yeah. type of day. Okay. Um, and then there's a later start time note on here, so I'll turn that over right. to you. Um, if you remember kind of mid-year when we were talking about the potential of um, looking at our start time, um, we decided that we would hold off and put it on dis as a discussion item now. So um, if we're, if we're going to continue to look at it, if you'd like to continue, we could start looking at some information start to bring some information to you um, I know that there have been a couple of districts that have looked at it Dobbs Ferry um, has recently gone through a change we we looked um, ourselves at the potential of n maybe not going for an hour later but a half an hour later probably would be a, f a feasible uh, solution we we did bring in some research that sh that discussed why it would be something we should be looking at and so I'm just bringing it up again to see how you'd like to proceed, or if you'd even if you'd like to proceed. So is that flipping elementary and high school, or is it just moving everybody back a half hour? Just moving everybody back. So as is. So the yeah. elementary will still come in first. And, and, and when we were looking at it um, the first time, one of the things that we realized, and it was, and, I, and we knew it happened, but we thought about it as far as the start times. When the elementary, when the high school students and the middle school students are dropped off, our bus drivers literally wait for 15 minutes before they go out again. So it wouldn't necessarily be a half an hour push to the elementary. If they dropped off and then went directly out, it would be 15 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 15 to 20 minutes by the time they got back. So that's something that we looked at, and, and we, could, we could either, without doing anything, we could probably just simply move the high school students by 15 minutes and then not use that 15 minute of wait time. Mm -hmm. And so there are different options out there. Um, we did look at some of the research that came from the um, American Society of Pediatrics, and they were saying that the they thought that the appropriate start time f for kids was 8.30. That would be tough with all the things that our kids do after school, but there would be an opportunity to look at it for a later start time, um, maybe maybe 8 o'clock um, as, as the, the latest that wouldn't create huge ripple effects. Um, the one thing that we couldn't quite figure out when we were talking about it is lunch because we don't have an extra lunch block in there, but we would have to see how that would work out. So, um, I mean, from, from the conversation, if I remember correct, I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff, but I mean, probably the two biggest hurdles um, would be the, the sports issue with, with sporting yep. and, 
any contractual issues that you would have, I guess, with with the unions changing times. Our our, so, you, our contracts are seven and a half hours. So there's no, there's no start, time start or end time. Yes, it's the duration of the day. Okay. So there would be a little more flexibility because of that, but we also talked about tenth period and how important tenth period right. is, and um, we use it for um, lessons and music and that would be something we'd have to talk about. So there would be a number, number of ripple effects. Um, well, why would 10th period be a fa I mean, I thought the idea was just everything starts a right. half hour later. Well, if you, have, if you have games, students that have a 10th period would leave earlier. And so oh, it would be, yeah. So it would, the majority of time it wouldn't be problematic, but on those days that right. they're, if, if they had banned, right. they would have to leave midway. So what, what I was getting at was to, to maybe just address the those things first just to like i hate to go through this whole process get the community involved and say yeah we want to do it mm -hmm. and then find out that you know we can't do it because of athletics or there's a union issue that that we can't that's preventing us from doing it so let's get over those make sure that those there's no hurdles like that there and then you know to because to have the whole conversation mm -hmm. and then be told that we can't do it because of this hurdle you know, let, let's let's figure out the hurdles first, and the the big administrative hurdles. Right. And then if we go, all right, that's not going to be a problem. We can do it if the board and the community is is good with it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's at least get those cleared up first, right? Okay. There's a discussion about the shared environments, right? Like going to BOCES, right? Yeah. Special ed, all, all that administrative stuff. Let's just like instead of having this conversation with the community and then be coming back and saying just anything. Right. You know, let's just get the administrative stuff, yeah. make sure that we, we got the green light administratively. Right. Do we want to do it? And, it's, and there, I can tell you that some of the things will fall into place and others will have to uh, just agree that we're going to have a little bit of a disruption right. if we're going to do it. We have to decide what's more important, the earlier start time or the disruption. And right. what, and so we did do a, a brief presentation, if you remember, in the middle of the year. And I think most of the things that we would have to consider um, were in that presentation and things like BOCES. And, and we actually send a run out early before they pick up for the, for the regular day for BOCES. So that wouldn't be problematic. The kids would still be picked up early in the morning. And we just have to make sure the time during the day coincided. So if that's what you want to do, we'll, we'll, have, we'll take out the presentation, we'll return um, and look at it, and then we'll see if there's any additional things that we need to add to it. And I really, I mean, I, I'm familiar with this research. If, if the feeling right now is that a half an hour is really all we can do, I actually want to get a sense of is, that, is there any evidence that that has the potential to give us the benefit that it that you're looking for, right? So the benefit, right, the proposed benefit is that starting an hour later is going to increase how well kids are doing at school because they are more awake, right? So I want to go look at, you know, what what is the magnitude of the benefit that that's showed and if there's any evidence, you know, and, and I mean, especially in a community like Helen where so many of our students are involved in activities after school it's one of the benefits of a small school that kids can so you know so many kids anybody who wants to do something can participate in after school events those are really important um, it's not like it's, it's a small percentage of, of kids um, yeah so I think I think your question Diana was is this something when it can we want to continue to consider or pick up again and 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 I would argue or I would suggest yes yeah, I mean, the evidence is just so compelling. I think that's what we talked about mm -hmm. whenever that presentation was. The evidence for why it's a good idea is so compelling. You can't argue with it. Yeah. So it's just a matter of if we can actually do it here. And if we want to go through the headaches, there will be some headaches. So mm -hmm. if we want to go through those. Um, and I would love to hear a recommendation, yay or nay, from the administrators as well. Mm -hmm. You know, is this something that they are really big fans of? Mm -hmm. um, and the students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can. <laughs> we have a high school student in the back. She's saying, yes. Yeah. 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 And the research really showed um, that the they were talking about the 830 start time, and they said that that was the optimal time 
but even if it was half of that. They did say that. Yeah. yeah. It's, there would still right. be a benefit. Yeah. So. I don't, I, and I'm sure your presentation had it in it, but think about like working parents of elementary school children that you can't, like that's, they're, so yeah. Right. If, if it's something that we're gonna pick them, we're gonna review the presentation. I'll, I look forward to reviewing the presentation. Yeah. Cause I don't, yeah. And that's just one part of it, you're right. If we can do it, but then does the community want it? Right. Right, because you're right, that will affect drop off and pick up times for elementary yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, what I will do is we'll bring, we'll resurface the information um, and the research on the on the start time conversation. We'll pull out the PowerPoint. We'll review it. We'll add any additional problems that we see and any additional benefits, and then we'll bring it to you. Sounds good. Cool. And would that presentation be probably posted in board docs from a meeting earlier this year? I know it was presented. I, I would have to go back. Okay. But, I, right. but we can pull it out. It's, okay. It's easy enough to get to. Yeah, Might have been before we adopted board docs. Okay. No, because yeah. we didn't, didn't we adopt board docs over the summer? Didn't we kind of start? We started this year with board docs? Started this year with it. Oh, we did? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So this should be in there somewhere. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it sounds as though the administrative team has already started to have conversations around the logistics right. of this move. Yes. Uh, so I would continue to have those discussions and then come back to us and tell us we find a couple of things that we think might work and then you can present it to us and then we can start to get uh, feedback from, from the public. Okay. Uh, but it's definitely, it's going to be hard to go first regionally because of the complications with sports. But I think if we can, you know, if we can get a half hour as a first step, that might be the way to think of it as a first step and then as other districts uh, see what we're doing and see what their neighbors are doing, we might find more following and then yeah, it might be feasible later to, yeah. to, to go for the hour. Right. Right. And, I, and one of my first calls will be to Dobbs Ferry, who's about to start a later time. So they just went through the process and I, I can see. And it would, I'm sure that they can tell us the growing pains and some of the other things that they dealt with. Yeah, I've always thought it was something that how they should consider and it's something that we are. And the notion of flipping, that's not, yeah. that's not an but option? Was that even discussed? It, well, it, it's it was discussed. part of the conversation, but I think that the babysitting issues, um, I th there, were some, there were some issues as far that as... eliminate the sports issue, wouldn't it? No, because then the, the high school kids would come in late, latest. Later. The high school oh, no, 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 they would come in later, right. So that doesn't solve that at all. Yeah. But I think there was a, actually, I think the positive was the babysitting, yeah. you know, component because the older students are home and the parents would, could drop off earlier. But yeah, it became problematic with the sports at the other end. So we'll pull, we'll pull out the information. Okay, good. So it sounds like where that conversation will continue is, um, are there any uh, thoughts from the public at the time? Yeah, please. The later start time, but that's interesting too. <laughs> um, I just wanted to. Uh, Andrea, will you introduce yourself? Yes. As new, yes, uh, I'm Andrea McHugh, and I am the new president of the Haldane Faculty Association. Um, and, well, that's why I wanted to say. So I just wanted to say something, um, not as um, the HFA president, um, but uh, but as a special ed teacher. Um, uh, about Jen Wilson, I just wanted to also just say that um, I cannot speak enough about how much I respect Jen and what a pleasure it's been to work um, under her as a, as a special ed teacher, but she was the person who brought me in. Um, she was the one who hired me and um, really she acted as a mentor as well as um, a supervisor and I was really impressed with um, just how many hats <laughs> she's worn um, at her time at here at Haldane, and I know that that uh, she's going to have some pretty big fill shoes to fill. So, um, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're moving into uh, new business: CSE and CPSE recommendations. Um, can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Julie, do you need to read 
anything yes. for our discussion here? The recommended action is that the Excuse me. Thank you. The recommended action is that the board approves the recommendations by the Committee on Special Education and Preschool Special Education as indicated. Okay. Um, and I think after you read it is when I do the motion. So, can I have a motion? <laughs> motion. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Approval of the resolution uh, for the fund balance. So, Julie, I'll let you read that. Okay, the recommended action is that the Board of Education approves the following resolution. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District hereby authorizes the funding of the district's approved reserves with the excess of 4% from the unappropriated fund balance at June 30, 2015, after the designated amount for tax reduction has been set. The allocation of such excess fund balance will be determined subsequent to June 30, 2015 and prior to setting the tax levy. Okay, can I have a motion? Motion. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Uh, authorization to renew the audit committee and charge for 2015 to 16. The recommended action is that the Board of Education appoints two of its members to serve on the Haldane Audit Committee for 20. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Skipped ahead one. The recommended action is that the Board of Education reauthorizes the audit committee and charge as presented for the 2015 16. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? There are no changes here. This is a uh, rollover from last year. And this is the only committee that we have to do tonight is that correct because we're in process with our audit we can't not have an audit committee we need to keep it moving along right and the rest we'll discuss at the retreat right okay uh all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. appointment of a board member julia and the recommended action is the the board of education appoints two of its members to serve on the haldane audit committee for 2015-16 can I have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Well, let's discuss you there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, previously that. throughout the year, it's been Peter and Evan serving on the audit committee. Um, I would suggest just keeping that going until we have our retreat, which will be on July 25th, and we're going to be talking more about okay. committees. Yeah. So I would kind of just suggest that you guys keep on, keep it on for the moment. Does that sound? I'm happy to do that as an interim measure. Yeah. But I do strongly believe that every board member should have a stint on the audit committee. Yes. And I've been on it. Uh, You've been my fourth <laughs> year on it, so I'm pulling some I weight. I will be bowing out, but yeah. uh, to give somebody else uh, a chance. Mm -hmm. But uh, as an interim, I'm happy to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a great opportunity to really get involved with the finances and really understand the finances of the district. So it's So from looking at this, good. I thought we were actually going to appoint somebody tonight. I look forward to, I mean, I don't want to jump on it and say it's me, but this is actually something I'd be very interested in doing. So, you, you know. Great. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Good. Yeah. yeah, I think at the retreat is a good opportunity for us to just get all the committees in front of us, make sure nobody's doing too much or too little, you know, and hash it out. Um, but Did consider that know? noted, yeah. Peggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> consider that noted. Yeah, I, I'm good. You go first. Yeah. So are we are we all okay with keeping Peter yeah, and yeah. Evan for the time yeah, being? We'll finalize it on the yeah on the 18th. Yeah. Good. Um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approval of the code of conduct, Julia. Okay. Um, has the board decided that they're ready to prove it? I think, we, well, we can kind of discuss that. Um, should we discuss it pre-motioning? Okay, so um, I, I personally would love a little more time with it. I don't know how you guys are feeling. Yes, I assume you okay. know it. That's fine. Back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Embarrassingly enough, I had the wrong time at the last meeting, so I wasn't there. So, Margaret, even you want a little more time yes. with it? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, all right, so it sounds like we want a little more time to digest, maybe putting it on the August 18th 
uh, potentially approving docket. Would that feel good? Yes. And need to send this out, or but just before the start of the school, you like it, it needs to be approved before the year begins. Because but is the 18th enough time? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if there's any questions between now and the 18th about the the document, it would be a good idea to send them over to Diana and, and so we can. The only thing we're looking at is the, that front page of changes. Those five. No, well, I mean, as part of the audit committee, you will also. I mean, the sorry, the code of conduct committee. Um, there will also be edits that I'm sure that you will see that there's they're very different than it so used to be. So it'll be the, all of those edits that we're going to be looking at. In yeah, I mean, August. generally what the board approves is the changes, the substantive changes within the code of conduct, and the audit, the code of conduct committee will actually audit what happens within the code of conduct, and make recommendations if they're additional. So here it's more. The, the legal components and the additions and the deletions that the board approves. And if there's anything that you need to see in there that's not there, then we can add it. But so you're going to be wearing two hats. Right. But I'm saying the board at the August 18th meeting is really just looking to those five right. things on the page. Yeah. The things that have been added or if there's any additional things that you think should be part of it that aren't in there. That's redlined in the, the PDF. Yes. Is, yeah. Has yes. the changes yes. tracked as, in addition to this outline of Correct. what they are. Very helpful. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we are tabling that. Um, approval of the contract for on site information technology. All right. The so, oh. Yes. Sorry, you were going to say something. I was going to read the recommended yeah, action. Uh, let me okay, uh, say we did get the um, the contract for Edutech for one day a week as opposed to two days a week, which we had last year. Um, the contract came to us today, and after reviewing it, um, there are some mistakes within the contract. I mean, to our benefit, they're, they're charging us half the money and giving us two days still. But <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's signed by them, but I think that the concept is um, the, it's one day a week for 52 weeks um, and we will, I will let them know that they have mistakes that they have to change before I sign it. So I just wanted you to be aware of that because in some places it says one day and other places it says two days. So um, I just wanted to make you aware of that. But if it's just one day. It is just one it's day. It's just one day, everybody. Okay. Yeah, I had noticed that. Uh, it says one day on the first page, but then yeah. subsequent times it's back to two days, yeah. which is what we've had Correct. Until, until now. Uh, so I, w I will ask them to give us a corrected version, um, and then I will sign it. But when you're, when you're approving it, the contract for one day a week with Edutech. So we're, we're authorizing you to sign the contract once those changes have been made. Correct. Okay. Okay. Ready for me? Okay. The recommended action is that the Board of Education approves the contract, I should say the corrected contract, mm -hmm. for on site information technology for 2015 16 with Edutech Limited, 67 Lafayette Avenue, White Plains, New York and authorizes the superintendent of schools to sign the corrected contract on behalf of the district. Okay, can I have a motion? Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of the resolution authorizing the continuation of the Board of Education policy and bylaws. recommended action is that the Board of Education approves the following resolution to wit, resolve that the Board of Education of the Haldane Central School District 15 Craigside Drive, Cold Spring, New York, hereby authorizes the continuation in force of the Board of Education policies and bylaws adopted and or amended as of June 30, 2015, including Board Policy 6110, Code of Ethics for All School Personnel, and be it further resolved that the Board of Education policies and bylaws hereby shall be subject to continuing review and shall be amended as necessary in accordance with procedures as set forth in the bylaws, and be it further resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. 
Any discussion? So there are no changes to this board policy 6110. It's just being called out right. for no particular reason. No, it's it's something that we have to approve, but it, there may be changes later on as we are going to be starting our, our thorough review this year. So. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any communication from the public? Sorry. Yes, Andrea. Um, uh, so, could, I, I don't know about that. Uh, the policy 6110. You'd said that there may be some. What, what is the, the the review that you were referring to, Diana? We're going to actually review the entire policy book, and okay. there's multiple chapters. And uh -huh. this year, we probably reviewed and modified 20 to 25 policies. There are hundreds, and so what we'll be working with is um, Erie BOCES and they'll help us any new laws or any changes that have happened that or any new language that should be in there they'll modify they'll help us modify anything that has has is antiquated and needs to be pulled out will be replaced by um, whatever it, it is that they suggest and then it'll come to the board for a first read um, multiple policies come to the board for a second read and then the board if when they're ready they will adopt them and so we're going to be looking at all chapters of the policy book and it will probably take a couple years to go through all of them okay. but some of our policies date back into the 80s Oh, okay. so and so once those changes or you know deletions you know edits are approved where where would one, where would a, uh, a personnel member like myself, where would I find? Well, we have right those? now they're in policy manuals, which are in the district office. Okay. But as we shift over in our new website, the policies will be available there okay. as well. Okay. And would do you think that they would be included in like the staff handbooks, things like that? Well, there are some um, that will that are in the staff handbooks and okay. things like code of ethics, um, right. Things like sexual harassment, you know, any of those that are required, and we have to review them every year, mm -hmm. and we have to share them with the faculty and the students some every year okay. and so as things like the, the code of ethics if there have been changes or mandates or any requirements things like with the with any of um, the DASA you know though there's a lot of new law that is now in the policy right. that didn't exist you know two years ago so that okay. keeps changing and okay. so we keep adding what we have to okay all right thank you you're welcome Okay. Um, yes. And also um, on that page with the link to the policy manual because it's huge. It's not in our. It's a link to the webs um, to the manual. Okay. Um, it also lists the policies that had been amended and um, voted on during the year. All right, thank you. So but I'll also say that as we review all the chapters, then by chapter, they they will be placed. Um, in the policy as, as updated and new chapters. And that would be under the Board of Ed, like the mm -hmm. yep. Board of Ed. It's, it's, yep. it's under district, okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? So um, I'm gonna make an, a motion to go into executive session and we probably won't be coming back here. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss the employment history of particular individuals and a matter made confidential by federal law, the Family Education Rights Privacy Act. May I have a motion, please? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's go.